Okay, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra uh, on March 19th, uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, so nice to see so many of you, uh, my beloveds. Um, and those of you who are with me for the first time uh, on our system, Zoom, I know that I have to mute everybody uh, because devices make funny noises and it creates disturbance. So if you have a question, you can write on the chat box or you can wave at me and I will unmute you and you can talk to me directly. Um, those of you who are on Facebook or Instagram, um, things move on too fast, too quickly. I'm not really able to respond to your questions. If you really want to communicate with me, you need to come on my website, zaratustra.tv, sign up through the academy, and I'll be more than happy to talk to you and answer your questions. Um, okay, so it's nice to see some of you that we just come back from our retreat in Sedona, Arizona. We had uh, nine magical days, um, and it was really a very, very special time, very transforming. Um, we went to very deep spaces together. Um, we went to very powerful vortexes and sites. We did uh, a number of different ceremonies um, with uh, either at the vortexes or also we did a very powerful sweat lodge uh, with a gentleman named Rogelio. We had a sound vibrational therapy, a shamanic sound vibrational therapy with a wonderful woman, uh, Valerie Irons, as well as we ended our ceremony by doing a medicine wheel walk and visiting the stupa, which is a uh, Buddhist uh, structure right in the heart of Sedona in the Red Lands. So it, it was a very, very powerful and beautiful time, especially being on the land and going to all these different uh, power spots. And we all bonded with each other and, and uh, hopefully this brotherhood, sisterhood that we've developed with each other will last a lifetime. So I'm so happy to have you in my life. I feel very grateful that I was able to share this very, very special time with you. And, uh, and we were able to go to this place together and have this experience um, simultaneously and be able to reflect back on this for the rest of our lives. So it was definitely uh, God's gift it was a very, very magical time, and um, hopefully there will be more. Um, one of our participants asked me if I would talk about uh, non-attachment to the results. And, uh, well, let me explain to you what I was basically talking about in previous times, for those of you who are new and are listening to me for the first time, what are we talking about? Is basically what I've discovered is that if I'm able and capable and train myself and bring myself into a level of understanding, and which this level of understanding basically comes through a few different steps. One of it, one of it, uh, and I'll tell you what the goal is and what the question is, and then I'll share with you how you can develop yourself to come to this place. And what happens is when we are very much invested into some kind of results, whatever we do, whatever is happening in our lives, um, whether it's an investment, like if you're investing financially into buying a property, um, buying jewelry, whatever, gold, 
something or a business and you have invested into it and obviously you want positive results because you want this to to uh be fruitful and you can you can harbor from your investment and that's one aspect the other one is that if you're invested emotionally in in whatever that you put time and energy into a partner and i'm using this couple examples there are simple examples for all of us to understand. I mean, this, what I'm talking about, it relates to pretty much every aspect of our lives. And um, it's not just limited to one thing. So basically, let's say if I'm investing into a relationship with someone and I'm hoping that I get what I want out of it. You now, whatever that is, you know, let's say I'm investing in this relationship with this woman and I want to marry her. I hope her, I hope she says yes to marriage and, uh, or I'm investing into a piece of property and land or whatever that I'm hoping in five years or 10 years, I can double my investment and make money out of. Now I'm really attached emotionally, mentally to the results of my investment because I'm hoping my investment is going to be fruitful and I'm going to get what I want. So I'm really attached to it, to the results of it. And then things don't go my way. Either I lose, uh, real estate market crashes, and I lose money in it or a person that I want to marry and and uh, after spending so much time and energy and investing into this relationship she says she's not interested in marrying me and and uh, and I don't get what I want so typically when we're not trained what happens is we deeply suffer because we're so attached to the results. We want results to be in certain way, to be the way we want it. So now I don't get what I want and I'm very, very disappointed and I'm suffering because of my attachment to the results because it has to go in this way. It must happen the way I want it. And if it doesn't happen the way I want it, then I'm miserable. And uh, life ends right there, for example, in my mind. So now, if you pay attention, you're gonna be noticing that you have the similar experience on a daily basis. Uh, some events are more significant, but you can just see like throughout the day, existence provides situations and opportunities that you really feel there is an attachment uh, to certain results and things don't go your way and you get disappointed <clears throat> you can pay attention and you will see it now how you get over this and retrain yourself so you don't go through this process of suffering is that you, you change your point of view. It's the shift in how you are seeing things. And it's all happening from within yourself. If I change my perspective, for example, I look at whatever happens in my life, whether they go my way or they don't go my way. And I look at it this way that existence, the spirit, God, the universal forces, whatever you would like to call it, the intelligence that runs the universe. Because there is something, the living spirit, a, a force that governs the universe. Something is putting these planets to turn around themselves and 
not to collide with each other. For example, in our own um, planetary system is all the planets around the Earth, they're all turning around themselves and they turn around the planet of the sun. And so, and none of them run into each other. So there is an intelligence here at work that takes care of things, is running the show. It's not happening by accident. Or your body, if you look at your body, how from the time you eat food and how it gets digested to the time goes through the process of elimination, so many different elements and chemicals are being produced and different things happening in the body to digest food. And it's, you, you're not on top of it. You're not thinking about, okay, now it's time for my pancreas to produce some digestive enzymes, or now it's time for my stomach to produce some hydrochloric acid. Um, or you don't think about your heart is beating, let's say, I don't know, 500 times or a thousand times per minute. And now I'm going to increase my heart beat to 1500 times or drop it down to 300 times. You don't think about that. All of these things are happening automatically without us being involved with them. As well as if you pay attention that like clockwork, the winter turns into spring, spring turns into summer and summer to autumn. And you can see like as the winter is shifting, going to spring, the tree starts to bloom, flower starts to come out, you hear the birds singing, the nature is opening up automatically. And also in fall, as we're going to, towards winter, everything is closing down and goes into hibernation. This is not in my power and I'm not controlling it, neither are you. Some intelligence is at, at work here. Something is doing this. So, Noticing that there is an intelligence that's running the show, governing the life and the universe. So once you shift your understanding and you start looking at it like, okay, well, there is this intelligence managing things. So, and it knows what it's doing obviously because it's been doing it for millions of millions of or for eternity and before i was born some force is running the show and after i leave my body and i move on to the next stage the show goes on it keeps life continues doing its thing so i don't need to worry about that so I can trust and accept it. I can accept, go into the surrender and accepting of what is, accepting of life is fully capable of supporting itself and doing its own thing. Obviously, because it's been doing it. There's a track record that it's been doing that. So it's even if logically you think about it and you see, okay, Life has been supporting itself and bringing, producing millions and millions, trillions of human beings and taking them out of the scene, bringing them in and taking them away. So obviously it knows what it's doing and it's got its own reasons. And I trust that. I can stay in this state of trust. So then you start to develop and pay more attention and your trust of life gets stronger. And in that, <clears throat> when life doesn't give you something you want or things don't go in your way, you have developed the trust, trusting life, then you can accept it. Acceptance comes 
and it gets much easier that you're accepting in the moment in this moment if something doesn't go my way i'm accepting it that doesn't mean i'm not going to try to make things work and i'm not going to try to get things going my way you can do that but you try once twice three times or four times and things something is not happening then you're surrendering and you're accepting to what is and you're not fighting it anymore and you're not sitting down and crying and beating yourself up and and making yourself a victim or pointing out at life that right life is cruel and life is not giving you what you want or things are not going your way and life sucks and blah 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 and going into this all negative and dark process in your your own mind you're not doing that you're simply looking at things from this other perspective of when something doesn't really go my way then it's the will of life it's the will of existence and there must be a wisdom in it that this thing didn't go my way i didn't get what i want there must be a wisdom in it and in that you surrender and then it and what happens is if something really goes your way and you get what you want obviously you're very happy and then when something doesn't go your way and you don't get what you want you have this indifferent attitude that even though you tried very hard to make it happen and it didn't happen but you're like okay i accept it it didn't go the way i wanted to go even though i was very much invested into whatever i wanted to get but things didn't go my way so i'm surrendered now there is no room for the mind to to suffer suffering becomes impossible because you cannot be disappointed there might be a moment of disappointment that rises that's okay oh oh it didn't happen oh i'm i'm so sad or whatever yeah momentarily you can react to it but not that reaction or whatever that you felt happens in that moment you reacted it happened it bursted out and then it's in the past and it's gone by the end of the day you're not really involved with it anymore you're not thinking about it or in a in a couple of days you're not involved in it anymore so that's one way of of dealing with things and the other way is what the majority of people have are doing it and we all been there before i've been there before of cooking and really going to this thing and bringing it into my own uh consciousness over and over and i'm really cooking over it and and going through all these mental processes that life is cruel and life sucks and life is unfair and it didn't go my way and ah oh, this or ah oh, that or pointing our fingers at whatever situation maybe the real estate broker or putting my finger at the woman that i was interested to meet up and saying oh she's insecure or she is not ready for love or this is wrong with her and that is wrong with her and her heart's not open that's why she's afraid to dive into this with me and marry me and blah 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 i'm pointing out my finger at her blaming somebody else instead of just simply maybe it's true maybe she's afraid she can't dive into it or 
she whatever it is but the final verdict is that she said no she doesn't want to marry me and from a higher consciousness I process it, I go through it, I feel the heartbreak, I feel the disappointment, but then it's finished. You don't carry this with you to the next day and the next day and the next week and the next month. Because simply what happens is you suffer. But now you just have this wisdom that this thing didn't go my way, and then you say, okay, the spirit that I trust in life, I trust, obviously didn't find this suitable for me. So there is a wisdom in it that it didn't go my way. And I accept it. Then you don't suffer. And we all get this opportunity every day. You get it, if you don't get it today, you get it tomorrow. That something happens. That doesn't go your way and you just let it go. Hilda, do you feel like this was, did I answer your question? Yes, you did, thank you. Right. Thank it, you. Is, Anybody else have any questions? Surrender, surrender, surrender. And the trust, trusting life and I think it doesn't matter at what stage in your life you are. I believe that existence will challenge you and put you in these situations that what, whether it's a life-threatening situation that you're in it or something happened to somebody you love and is close to you and creates life-threatening situations or financial threatening situations that you may lose financially um, or losing relationship or friendship or something. Um, that life creates that on a regular basis and tests you, especially if you're on a spiritual path. Because when you're on the spiritual path and you're, you ha what happens is when you come to the spiritual path and you start to develop, you're developing and a part of your development is that you begin to understand the communication. You begin to hear your inner voice and, and develop this communication link between yourself and the higher self or the spirit or God or the forces that governing universe, your guides. So a link is developed and now there is you hear things, they talk to you. And when I say they, there is no they because it's all part of yourself. But I have to put it in, in dual world, I need to put it in some kind of way that it's understandable. So what happens is the real guru, the master, your guru, the master, is within yourself. But 
we are not developed enough to be able to hear the voice and communicate with the teacher, with the master, within ourselves, because it's here. So, as you get more conscious and get sensitive and you start to expand, then what happens is you start to notice and you begin to speak about your inner voice. Say your God feeling. Your God feeling, your inner voice is telling you not to do something or not to do that. Okay? But you have to be careful because there's a lot of people on spiritual path in the new age world, new age spirituality, that they're mistaken their inner voice with the voice of the ego. And they're relating their inner voice to their ego. And that's a dangerous place. So you have to slowly distinguish these two from each other. That is it my ego commanding to me or it's my real inner voice? Which one is it? And as you develop, you will tell, you know the difference. If you're sincere and you're honest with yourself, you can tell the difference. It takes time, but you will discover it. You know if you're ego tripping or you really it's really coming from the very core of your being. So you're going forward, you're developing, and in this development, what happens is you start to hear the voice. And the voice is leading you. Slowly, 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 the connection gets stronger and stronger. So the communication line gets deeper. And as you advance, so what happens is now you know if you do something wrong, something inappropriate, according to your level of consciousness, I'm not talking about morality, and I'm not talking about legal stuff. I'm not talking about what society perceives as right or wrong. I'm talking about what your inner self is dictating as the right thing for you in the level of consciousness you're at. Because you may be here and something's something, you do something, but you may be here and you do the same thing you did here, but now you will get the Zen stick. Because at, those, at that level of consciousness, you did something and your higher self is okay with it because you're not developed enough. But then when you're more developed, then if you do the same thing, it's not acceptable anymore. And you may get some sort of repercussion, something happens, they come back at you and you may perceive it like it's a punishment, but it's not really punishment, but you may get a slap on your hand because they come back and tell you, no, you're too conscious, too aware, to do a sleepy thing, to have this unconscious behavior. Five years ago, we let you get away because you weren't ready, but now you're too developed for that. So now we're going to awaken you. We're gonna give you a little slap on your hand so you wake up to it. So now, I, so that changes too. So your communication channels getting stronger and stronger and you're getting more expanded and you can hear the voice telling you what to do and in that process the trust gets stronger you begin to trust yourself life more 
because you are aware of a communication. Now, for many of us, before we get to that point, before you, you rise to the place that you are like a, like a tree, you know, when you're planting a tree and it's a baby, it's a little plant, you have to put a fence around it and you have to tie it with some strings. So if there is a storm, it doesn't break the tree. If there is animals walking around, they don't walk over the tree and they don't break it. So you protect it. But as the, this little tree gets bigger and bigger and gets more established in the planet, in, in the earth, and it's really rooted, that's a strong tree, it doesn't need those protections anymore. So, same thing happens with us. As you're developing to certain point, you need, we need an other teacher. We need the guru. We need the, the teacher to communicate with you, to tell you things you need to know because you haven't developed the language and the communication skills to be able to get the messages from your inner guru. Your inner guru is always there. And the real guru is within yourself. It's always within yourself. But until the point that you get to this place to realize that the guru is within and the guru is always talking to you, until then, and to develop the skills of understanding the language, we need to hear it from the other world. And naturally, we're seeking for a spiritual teacher in the other world. But if the true spiritual teacher will keep sending you inside, will force you to go inside yourself to discover it within yourself. That's the quality of a true spiritual teacher. So, as you're developing in this process, now, development in this process, some people may develop in 20, 30 years, some people may take them a lifetime to develop. We never know. You may come to this understanding at the end of your life. You may come to this understanding in the last 10, 15 years of your life, and you tell yourself, wow, I wish I knew this earlier. You may come to this understanding in early ages, as we can see in new generations, that there's a lot of awakened children and very open, and they know a lot of things that it took me years to come to. It doesn't, whatever, it's like different flowers and different plants, and they're all gonna bloom and get ripe, different fruits, they get ripe in their own timing. There's no, you can't speed it up. But the fact that we're here together and we're hearing these words and we're understanding these words, that shows that you have arrived at a stage of maturity, spiritual maturity, that you understand this. You hear it, you understand it. So back to what we were talking about is because we were talking about not being attached to the results. If I'm not attached to the results of an in investing into something, then I cannot suffer. So now I go, I go back. What I'm talking about is that you start paying attention to your heart, you begin to hear that your inner guru 
your sat guru is speaking to you and is telling you go this direction do this don't do that sometimes it may not be so clear but slowly slowly you develop that and then you're invested in a situation again i use this example of of wanting to marry somebody and you're really invested in this relationship and in the, in the last moment the person says i don't want to marry you or i realize i don't love you and and you get rejected and naturally you are a bit disappointed or heartbroken but you have developed within yourself that you have learned not to be really attached to the results so you didn't get the results you want and now you are like i trust existence and i trust the spirit that this was not meant to be for me and there must be something a better thing that is going to happen in my life so because you start to develop this relationship with yourself that you can get the messages and you're trusting it you're trusting your inner voice you're trusting the self you're trusting life that life knows what it's doing and in the meantime you may be experiencing um you get challenged. Different challenges happen every day. And it pushes you to come back into the place of trust. Trusting. Something inside you tells you everything's going to be okay. You're taken care of. There's nothing to worry about. You are going to be okay. And you have developed this powerful intuition and this communication with the guru within and you trust it and you fall back into this place and you accept what is and you surrender to what is and as you go forward and you do that then a great quality is going to be cultivated in you you begin to develop a very very high quality of a attitude that this will save you and that is humility you become humble humility is a treasure that we develop within ourselves to become humble to life that means your ego starts to subside this me this voice that i am this and i am that and i am powerful and i'm the author of my life and i can do this and this is mine and i want everything for myself and i don't give a shit about anybody else as long as i get what i want and I don't care me 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 that one which is ugly is an ugly voice it's got an ugly face which is hidden always wants to sneak in and says look at me look at me i am such an amazing healer look at me look at me it's my energy my energy that does this or look at me how smart i am how pretty i am how amazing i am or i can manifest anything i want me 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 now we you start to recognize that one you can see that's really ugly whenever it comes out of you or whenever it comes out of me i can see how ugly i become because i see it and sometimes it comes out you don't see it and then someone reflected back to you or a situation in life happened that boom you get hit because 
you're getting closer. Your relationship to the guru within is getting stronger and stronger. So messages come very quickly. If you're off the line, they immediately put you back. And you may look at it as a form of a punishment, but it's not punishment. It's out of love. Because you're getting closer to the source. You're getting closer to the final destination of dissolving into the oneness, dissolving into pure love, where there's no ego, where the me, the little me, disappears into pure love. And then your heart is completely open and you're completely a vessel of light and love without the ego. So surrender, acceptance and surrender. As you start to raise your, your consciousness, you begin to see and you begin to accept when things don't go your way. So you surrender to that. And as you surrender and accept it, then you begin to see the magic of life because you're in communication, you're constant communication with, with God, with the voice within, with the spirit. And in that, you become humble. Humility comes. You, you bow at the presence because the presence begin to show itself to you. The present, you're accepting life, you're surrendering to life, and now the presence begins to show herself in your daily life. And you start to feel it, you start to see it, you start to touch it. It begins to dance around you, it plays around you, it tickles you, it kisses you. And you start to have this feeling of a very subtle dosage of bliss con constantly throughout your day. And you become, start to become balanced in life. Your ups and downs, they get a lot less. If before you were going up and down and up and down, now you're just going a little bit up and down. You're getting more steady. And since you're feeling the bless and you become humble because you start to see that when you see the homeless people on the street, when you see people are poor or they're dirty looking or whatever it is, you don't judge them anymore. Because you start to realize life circumstances has brought them to this point. Life circumstances put somebody go through divorce and lose their husband and kids and money. Life circumstances brought someone to getting cancer and losing an arm. Life circumstances, you know, you see all these people are mighty, powerful, super wealthy, and, and then a few years after you hear this story that they became homeless, and you start to kind of be humble about it. Not being afraid, but humility comes. Humbleness. Your judgment goes away. You don't judge people or things so quick, so fast, as you were doing it before. Now you're moving more into your divinity. You're dissolving. It's a dissolution of I am this, I am that, I am mighty into I am. Not I am something. Into the I am. You dive in slowly into it. You become more quiet. You're more sensitive. You don't really want to be in a lot of noisy people with a lot of noise. You start to develop enjoying aloneness. You're comfortable hanging out by yourself. 
you no longer get nervous or frightened that you're alone. Loneliness turns into aloneness. It's another quality that is being developed in you. Your heart opens more. You become sensitive to the nature. You become sensitive to the animals. You become conscious of what is going on in your surrounding because before you just were have no idea what's going on it's all about i get whatever i want and i don't give a shit about anybody else as long as i get what i want now i'm not saying you're going to turn into a mother teresa and you're going to give up your life and take care of other people maybe you do that and i'm not saying you got to do that what I'm saying is you develop compassion. You open, your heart opens up automatically because the mind is quieting down. The fears and anxieties in life begin to disappear. Because how can you be afraid and live in anxiety when you have powerful trust? When you feel the spirit in your heart so powerfully and the presence around you how can you be afraid? How can you worry about what's going to happen in the world? Oh, the world is ending. Terrorists are taking over. There is this new disease all over the world. You're connected to your heart. You feel presence here. You're not afraid of anything. Nothing can shake you because you have God in your heart. Where God is in your life, fear doesn't exist. And I'm not talking about the God in the church. I'm not talking about the punishing God that wants to punish you. No, I'm talking about that which is always here, the presence. When you have that in your life, there is no room for fear or anxiety. At the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, fear or anxiety, dark forces do not, they have, they disappear in a second. So as you go forward into this, the power of your being begins to expand and expand. Your power of your presence becomes mighty because you disappear. The idea of you, the me, 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 me disappears into I am. And I am, the sense of I am takes over. Still, challenges will happen. Still, Somebody you love in your life may die or leave or break up with you. Still, you can lose money, but you have powerful faith, powerful presence, powerful trust. So you can handle the storms of life because life is full of adversities. Life is not all peaches and cream. It's not going to be like every day, everything goes your way. Things don't go your way, but you are fine with it. You're observing it. You see whatever comes and whatever goes. Nothing can shake you. You have become a very thick, big old tree rooted in the planet. Nothing can shake you. No storm can touch you. And the deeper you go into this, the deeper you stay with it, the more you begin to feel and recognize the presence in your life, the presence of the spirit, of the force.
more beautiful you become, you become radiant. And to your presence, you change the vibrations of the whole area you live in, you help the planet, you help the existence from your presence, not your demonstration or your anger. No, from your presence, you simply are and your being affects your surroundings. And that would be your contribution to life by discovering yourself and recognizing who you are and what a beauty you are by recognizing the light inside yourself. By recognizing the presence of God within yourself, recognizing it, sensing it, feeling it every moment in your life, surrendering to ups and downs, no matter what happens, you are surrendered to it. And then you begin to see that life worth living and there's qualities to it that we never knew. We never knew it existed. And then you begin to see the magic of it. You begin to see the miracles of life. So many things begin to happen. So many different gems, beauty, angels, situations happen that continuously reflecting back what is going on inside yourself, reflecting your own light. The entire universe will come and bow at you because you have become one with it. And all that, of that happens from the very first step of acceptance and surrender and all of it is within your reach it's all here it's all available for you you're not far far from it and don't allow your mind to come and say i'm not worthy i'm not i'm far you're not it's right here right now available for you at any moment. All you have to do is take the first step. Everything else comes automatically.
Thank you for joining me uh, for those of you who are in Southern California, I have uh, created a series of talks called the 5D Quantum Awareness Talk Series that I will be conducting in Los Angeles and Long Beach. Um, we had an event last evening. Our next event is going to be this coming Thursday at our Long Beach Center. All the information is on my website. Zaratustra.tv. I'm also offering the five, fifth dimensional quantum healing training program level one in Los Angeles on April 13th and 14th, as well as another workshop, a one day workshop called Return to Love in Long Beach, California on April 20th. After that, I will be traveling to Norway, Sweden, Poland, Germany, and France. And um, I look forward to seeing you in one of these countries. And uh, also, I will have my signature retreat, which is going to be from July 1st to the 11th in Sweden, in Ore. So, um, Feel free to reach out and connect with me. My website is zaratustra.tv. I look forward to hearing from you, sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.